There's no place like home. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mountains. Today we're going to be bringing you along to the testing of a brand new slug by the Ballistic Machinist. I think Tim is the first individual to ever send us stuff to test, and he has sent us some wild stuff over the years. Today's creation is called the Subsonic Dumbbell. This is similar to his Supersonic Dumbbell, which is made out of steel. In order to get the weight of these slugs up to two ounces, which is twice the weight of a normal 12 gauge slug, Tim made these out of copper, which has a higher density than steel. These are designed with a muzzle velocity of around 937 feet per second, which is subsonic. So the ultimate goal is to be able to use these through a suppressor, but still deliver a tremendous amount of energy. The slug itself is full bore and is sized to go through rifling and I honestly do not understand the purpose of these Sabos. Now these are designed for a cylinder bore shotgun. Honestly, I wouldn't want to be the first person to test these through a full choke. It looks like a very, very tight fit. But today we'll be testing these through full rifling and also a smooth bore, and maybe we'll learn what those Sabos are for. Welcome back to Later Crew. Here we are again on a balmy, sunny California day it's supposed to be like 97 out here today uh, real feel I think is about hundred and eighty <laughs> it's hot <laughs> no it's hot these are the dumbbell slug these are solid copper um, two o-rings each end for guidance and a sabo type situation in the middle we're not really sure if <laughs> we don't know what that's supposed to do Supposed to help it down the barrel or yeah. keep it from collapsing in the barrel or what? But let's try the full rifling first. Okay. If we, I'm pretty sure it'll be stable with full rifling, but we yeah, want to try it in, in different configures. I, I'm pretty sure you can't shoot these through a full choke though. Full Good. rifling, it's it's sized perfectly. Cylinder bore, perfect. So we're gonna go with that. Right. We'll let some other fool uh, <laughs> shoot it through a full choke full or through choke. a suppressor, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Yeah. Nice sharp. 451, that doesn't seem, look right. In real time, everything looked good except that chronograph reading, and the high speed camera shows the slug was very stable in flight and the accuracy was acceptable. If we look a little closer, we can understand why our optical chronograph gave us a funky reading. The chronograph is looking for a single object's shadow passing over it. But we had broken pieces of the Sabos, pieces of O-ring, and also the gas seal passing over it besides the projectile. Without the aid of the high-speed camera, we probably wouldn't even known that all occurred. One thing Danny and I did notice during the shoot was these things were noticeably quieter than a normal supersonic slug. And I imagine through a suppressor, these things would be very quiet. But let's try it one more time through full rifling and see if the results are the same. Bottom of the yellow, right between the eyes. Okay, gotcha. I'm ready. In test number two, the accuracy just wasn't as good as test number one again using full rifling. Once again we see that telltale clue of the gas seal with the skirt partially ripped off. One thing we have to consider is the high ambient air temperature and the type of powder used may be designed for much lower temperatures. And once again we wouldn't have known there was even an issue without the high-speed camera. That means... <laughs> See how it does against the water jugs with the smooth bore. See if we, these are made to shoot out of a smooth bore. Maybe they are. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, let's wash off some of that watermelon smooth. Yes. And here we go. Wow. Wow. Now I bet a few of you are thinking that thing's just gonna tumble down range because there's no rifling. Rifling makes everything better, but it performed beautifully. 
This slug can be fired forward or backwards. It's neither front heavy nor rear heavy. Somehow it's very stable without any spin. This one was pretty accurate. Smooth bore and it was looked stable in flight. Oh, there goes the jugs. Take out the trash. Yeah, easily went through all the jugs. And then it hit our Kevlar. Oh, look at that, it punched out a piece of plastic there. Didn't hit with, a, you know, the water killed a lot of its energy. And Danny found it behind the table there. That one looks like it's good to go for another try. Yeah. Now here's something to ponder. We have three rolls of ballistic toilet paper, just normal uh, Costco toilet paper, but it comprises of thousands of layers of paper. In a previous video, we used this as a target shooting a CCI mini mag at it a 22 caliber bullet traveling around 1250 feet per second. That bullet ended up halfway through the third roll. It didn't even go all the way through. Based off that, how many rolls do you think the dumbbell round will go through? This thing is much larger in diameter and relatively flat on the end. It's not even pointed. And on top of that, it's traveling at a much lower velocity. And finally, the rolls, which are very light and weight, will not even be strapped down. Okay, physics nerds, put down your slide rules and prepare to see the results. Oh, come on, win. Hey, yo. Whoa. Oh. And we still don't know what the purpose of those sabos are. They keep breaking even out of the smoothbore. But here comes our big old slug. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And instead of just pushing the entire line of rolls of toilet paper off the table, it just penetrates all three of them. In fact, you probably noticed that the first roll hasn't even moved yet. I mean, how can that be? I mean, if you take a balloon and try to punch in the air, you can't hurt it, right? Oh, look, there goes the slug there after hitting the Kevlar. But that's what high-speed inertia looks like. Even with a relatively fat, blunt object that's not going super fast, the weight of each roll of toilet paper is still a lot heavier than the weight of the slug. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. Unfortunately, a lot of people's understanding of physics, especially about firearms, comes from video games and movies. I mean, you've seen it where a guy gets shot and his body goes flying backwards through a door or something like that, and that can just never happen. Eat. And for those who think, eh, yeah, the roll of toilet paper is super easy to penetrate, though. It really isn't. I was only able to penetrate about an inch of the toilet paper using my full strength with a screwdriver. It probably would have helped if I didn't hit the, the dang hole there, but you get the idea. Anyway, the slug passed through the first roll without deforming it or even really moving it. Then it went on to the second roll. The hole progressively got larger, the resistance got a little bit greater, and we did see the second roll move just a little bit. And then finally it hits the third roll and just completely shreds it. And if you want my honest prediction about what would happen, I did not think it would go all the way through all three rolls. World famous lead plate. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Le the go. X on the left, right side, right? right? On the left. Okay, I'm ready. I gave this slug a very good chance of going through the lead plate. In fact, I even put Kevlar behind the plate to capture it in case it went through. But it hit at a 45 degree angle. There's a tornado behind you, Danny. Oh. <laughs> so what happened? Well, point of aim here, hit a little high here. It was flying, looked like it was flying straight, and then it just kind of did this curvy thing on the end there, right before it hit. Knuckleball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that helped. The meat really didn't move at all much. No. 
I couldn't quite see. Uh, yeah. Is that a number three? Yeah. Couldn't quite see where Jeff had a circle mark because of a glare off the sun. So I aimed for the glare, and that's where it hit. Okay. So that was accurate. Passed through. Fairly clean hole in the plastic. Yeah, it really didn't uh, move the meat very much. Yeah. Uh, so these things are super penetrators, apparently, even subsonic. I think it missed the bone. Ah. Uh. In this test, we possibly proved that the slug will go through a wild boar, and probably the wild boar standing behind it, all without really damaging the meat. I imagine it would work very well against grizzly bears coming to attack you, too. People always ask us this stuff, and you know, where do you get a grizzly bear to test? I don't know. Army helmet. Were you aiming at the side? Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> just, uh, just the middle of the side. Middle of the side. Okay. Right above the ear bone. Okay, gotcha. I'm ready. In this test, we show a U.S. military helmet getting hit with a two-ounce slug. And yes, I believe it would hurt a little bit. Notice how we strapped the helmet on and look at the force of the strap on the jaw of the dummy. I think it would break your jaw too as it was ripped off the head. Again, we saw the X-12X gas seal blown out, the skirt ripped off, and fragments of the Sabos. Yeah, pretty solid hit. About point of aim right there. Hit, skimmed through here, and that's how we found it. Wow. Can you pull it out? Oh, there you go. Got all its O-rings. Smashed a little sideways on the nose. Hey. It's hot. One it's more, hot. just one more, and that's it. One more. At 25 yards, the slug and Danny were very accurate. I think we both had a case of heat stroke from being out there for several hours. And I also think the heat affected the performance of the slug. As we saw with the gas seals, Every time we saw them in frame, they were damaged. The skirt was ripped off. The X-12X gas seal is normally a very tenacious, tough uh, gas seal, and it's rare to see them rip apart like that. And I think that was due to the heat. Now, we still don't know what the purpose of the Sabos are and if they are actually a hindrance to the performance of these or not. Stay tuned.